What's happening everybody? P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 25 of my favorite 31 hard rock and metal albums of the 70s. We are counting down each and every day. Every day. One a day. Boom, 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 boom. Going all the way to the end of the month. My number 31 through my number one. You guys are playing along as well. I have limited myself to only a maximum of two albums per any one band so we can get the maximum number of cool bands and albums in this list as possible because as I've said, if I didn't put that restriction on myself, probably my entire list would be made up of like five, six bands, right? Because some of my favorite bands from the 70s who do hard rock and metal had a number of great albums in the decade, right? So all of a sudden it could be just, you know, one after another after another from all the same bands and that's no fun that we can't talk about all the cool one-off albums and things like that that i also love quite a bit so that's how we're playing it this month so today we're going to talk about the fourth studio album from an american band only the second time an american band has shown up on my list so far all right it was released may 3rd 1976 recorded at the warehouse in waltham massachusetts Produced by Jack Douglas and the band for Columbia Records. That's right, I'm talking about Rocks by Aerosmith. Can only be Rocks. Also some stuff done at the record plant in New York City to kind of finish things up here as well. Uh, this is long hailed by many people as, if not the best Aerosmith album, one of the top two or three, right? Easily. Steven Tyler on lead vocals, keyboards, harmonica, additional things here and there. Joe Perry lead and rhythm guitars brad whitford lead and rhythm guitars tom hamilton bass guitar joey kramer drums and percussion yeah they're back in the saddle baby right uh just one banger after another on this album uh this album contains some of my favorite aerosmith songs not all of them there's other great ones on other albums, too. Uh, Last Child is just absolutely terrific. Last Child is a top-tier Aerosmith song in my book. Rats in the Cellar, another snarling, raunchy rocker. You got the incredible combination, right? Over on side two of the original vinyl, you got Sick as a Dog. Nobody's Fault is a reason why lots of metal bands have covered Nobody's Fault, because it's a great fucking song. Uh, Get the Let Out is cool. Licking a Promise, Home Tonight. I mean, there's just there's a little bit of everything in here, right? I've always uh, thought that the, uh, the Aerosmith, whether they plan to or not, kind of to me were always like the Ro like the America's version of the Rolling Stones, but on steroids, right? Yeah, the two, the singer and the guitar player, the the, the focal point of the band. Yeah, the, the music is bluesy, raunchy, right? Uh, but they could do lots of cool different things. It wasn't always full throttle, you know, heavy rock and whatnot. But uh, the band grooved. Yeah, they, well, all the drug issues, right? I mean, there's so many parallels between the bands, whether you uh, love both bands or don't or whatever. But I always kind of saw Aerosmith as kind of like, you know, that they were our Rolling Stones here in the States. Uh, and again, no disrespect to, you know, Toys in the Attic or Get Your Wings or any, any of the other 70s albums because they're all really, really strong. Uh, but to me, Rocks was always you know my favorite of all of them but uh, a lot of good ones so yeah let's take a look at some charting positions why don't we because of course this album did pretty well right australia number 45 canada <clears throat> number 14 japan number 13 in sweden number 46 u.s billboard number three and as far as certifications this was platinum in canada 100,000 units sold and in the United States here, as of the last certification, four times platinum, four million copies sold. Pretty crazy, right, when you think about it. But what's, what's even stranger is that the uh, album before it, Toys in the Attic, sold way more, right? It's like, what, why? It's interesting we put them both back to back. Most people, when you talk to who are Aerosmith fans, Toys in the Attic and Rocks are usually the two, two the people pick out as their favorite, right, in most cases. And uh, I, you know, both albums were really big, but it's amazing how one's got like double the sales of the other. It's like, why is that, right? Usually it's pushed by singles and things like that, you know. And of course you had uh, Walk This Way on the Toys in the Attic album, which was a big hit for the band. And uh, yeah, it probably has a lot to do with that. And, uh, you know, sales going forward, you know, maybe when they did the Run DMC thing in the Scott Ladies early 90s, whenever that was again. Um, 
prompted lots of people who maybe weren't Aerosmith fans to go back and check out that album, right? So it probably has a lot to do with it. But yeah, but this this bangers all over this album, and uh, it's just a great one. And it's got the iconic cover as well. Got to pick it. Got to pick it. So let us know what you think of Rocks in the comments and in the chat for those of you who are hanging out in the chat uh, as well as your pick for today pick number 25 we've got 24 left lots of really great ones to come lots of really great ones to come and uh i'm, I'm already i'm already thinking because i finally i think settled on my list I, i've been making some subtle changes here and there i'm finally finally good with my list so i'm not touching it anymore but I'm already on August mode and starting to kind of put together a preliminary list of uh, my favorite just rock albums of the 70s. So again, I know we're, we're kind of splitting hairs here doing these shows, right? Because in some cases, some of these bands, there's a fine line between are they this, are they that? <clears throat> but I think what I'm doing for, for August is, you know, just my favorite rock albums, right? Uh, and and again, I'm not going to do Southern Rock because I already did the whole Southern Rock month. Uh, it, it, you know, it pains me to not include like, you know, Skinner and, you know, a few other bands in like a rock list, but it's like, but then I, I feel like sometimes I'm like, it's like the same albums are appearing over and over and over again, right? And so I'm trying to say, okay, so for the rock albums month, it's like I'm trying to pick stuff that doesn't, maybe doesn't fit in the prog show and maybe doesn't fit in the hard rock and metal show it doesn't fit in the southern rock show because there's plenty of other good rock and pop albums right that don't, don't really that don't fit into any of these other categories we've done but we want to talk about them right so so yeah so there may be some albums that kind of like you know could float in between any of them i'm trying hard not to do that so uh but yeah anyway it, it doesn't really matter it's all in fun right it's just it's just another way to talk about fun albums from a decade we love and i had a number of you who were asking if eventually I will do a monthly show where I talk about my favorite albums of the 70s overall, where anything's up for grabs, right? So it can include prog and hard rock and metal and pop and all the jazz, all that kind of stuff, fusion, everything. My favorite 30 albums of the decade of the 70s, all things considered. And I will do that at some point later this year. Um, that will be ridiculously difficult as you can imagine but i'm up for the challenge if you guys are right so that'll be coming down the road a ways we got some things to take care of first first uh, in august we're going to finish this month in august we're going to do our favorite rock albums in september i am going to do my favorite albums of the 60s right because we haven't done the 60s <clears throat> that's a decade we just kind of yeah we don't touch upon all that much here on the channel we do but we don't because it's like for me and what the stuff that i like kind of like 65 66 and onwards right so this is like early part of the decade that's like yeah there's some cool jazz stuff and things but you know the rest of the, a lot of the other music's not really my kind of in my wheelhouse but there are plenty of really good albums from like the the middle of the 60s on through the end so yeah so we're going to do that in september we're going to dedicate a whole month to my favorite however many days we're in september 30 or 31 albums from the 60s uh so that'll be fun right and then then we'll look to go into um overall albums of the 70s right where everything everything is up for grabs so that should be interesting so anyway that's what you have coming down the road a bit right so uh thanks for watching everybody again let us know what you think of rocks down below as well as your pick for today pick number 25 and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts and please do hit the like button before you leave also down below we got the links to our ko-fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page so thank you in advance for all of that and stay tuned just a little bit we got martin popoff and myself uh, walking into the fun house to talk about pop rock that is the theme for today we've got also coming up uh, later this afternoon, we got this afternoon. We've got uh, the next installment of my weekly uh, little show with Ken Golden, where he's going to talk about the, the new releases that are coming out today, Friday, that are available. Uh, we've also got uh, the monthly installment of Four Fusion Friday happening tonight, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, over the weekend, we've got Sunday. We've got ranking the albums. Jim Baki, Craig Kaminsky, and I will be ranking the catalog of the great California stoner metal band Fu Manchu. 
all dozen albums or attack on them. Uh, and I hope to get you another uh, overlooked and underappreciated live album episode, hopefully tomorrow uh, for Saturday. So, uh, yeah, so lots happening here on the channel, as always. But, of course, each and every morning, another one of these, right? Another pick from the 70s, my 31 favorite hard rock and metal albums of the 70s. Coming at you, number 24, tomorrow morning. Till then, I am Pete Pardo. Have yourself a great Friday, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.